I don't, okay. So, <laughs> all right, again, we're gonna, we're gonna welcome everybody to our budget presentation again tonight. Um, and as we mentioned before, if you have any questions, we're asking you to please email or send them in. Uh, we're going to talk through the presentation first, and then at the end, we'll address as many questions as we can. Um, so, but if there are any questions that we cannot address or answer at the time at the end of the session, we'll take your name and your email address and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Also, if there are any questions that are personnel related, we may or not be able to answer those directly online and we'll have to get back to you due to the personal nature um, with an email or a phone call if that's necessary. We know obviously that these are difficult times and we know that our school district is a vital part of our community and you as our um, taxpayers have a large part in this decision in making the process and the success of our students. As you know, this year has been unprecedented in many ways. It's been a new way of learning virtually for our students. Teachers are now instructing from their home. Administrators are learning and adapting to new regulations on a, on a daily basis. And lastly, um, districts all around are getting the news of budget cuts due to the hard economic times at both the state and the national level. Having said all that, and given the budgetary constraints, it truly, I believe it really is truly a testament to our staff, the administration and the Board of Education, all working together collaboratively that we believe we have provided and are presenting a budget tonight that given the circumstances, really maintain the necessary student programming, instruction and the best staffing level that we could sustain with all the minimal staff um, reductions. And those staff reductions were difficult decisions, but many of our staff reductions were achieved through retirements, some were unfilled vacancies, attritions, and the like. This is all the while working with close to an estimated 20% state aid revenue shortfall. So given that, we're gonna start with our presentation. In our budget hearing tonight, we'll touch upon the district's expenditures um, our revenues and some other areas. We have here um, are showing an example of what is presented and available on the Greater Amsterdam School District's website. Some of the documents included on the budget are the budget by account code, revenue detail by account, our school district fiscal accountability supplement, school district report tax report card, our district tax rates, and some other items. Later on, we will be we will be refining and navigating to the website to show you some of this information. At the May 19th Board of Ed meeting, which was held last Tuesday, the district's third budget plan was proposed to the Board of Education. At this meeting, the Board of Ed voted unanimously to approve and adopt the district's approved spending for the the district of close to $76 million or 75.9. This is an almost 2% decrease, uh, roughly 1.66% um, in spending for the 1920 school year. For the complete details of that spending plan, and again, we're going to go reference back to um, the GAS web, um, GASD website, which we'll be visiting later on in the presentation. Um, copies of this plan, obviously some of us are, can't get on it, but if you know of anybody that would like a hard copy of this presentation and our budget pres um, hearing documents, please let us know. Um, we'll send them out to them. Typically copies of the budget hearing documents are available at each of our six school buildings, but with the COVID-19 restrictions, the state has lessened this requirement and allowed for request. All of tonight's doc discussions and documents again, are also available online, which is customary and statutorily mandated. And I did also want to mention, I should have mentioned is included in our budget is the proposition for the purchase of two new buses, roughly about $225,000, which are being purchased with district's capital reserved um, dollars. And this will have no taxpayer impact. The district here has provided a summary of the district's overall budget. It gives you an idea of our estimated expenditures and what our revenue and then the difference of our expenditures over our revenue. 
Our initial budget proposal back in March actually saw close to a 2% increase. This is what I commonly refer to as pre-COVID times. At that time, the governor's executive budget proposed a state aid increase for the Amsterdam of around 2.56%. The pandemic hit and where the state was already facing a large deficit, it was now faced with yet a much larger one. With that, the district sharpened our pencils and came up with a spending plan that aligned with the anticipated but yet undefined decrease in state aid expected to be received. We still have not received the actual um, state aid dollars, but we our plan as we developed it was essentially a plan as um, Dr. Colatrilo has said many times was plan for the worst and let's hope for the best. As shown, the anticipated revenues for the year have dropped substantially by an estimated $1.8 million or close to 2.5%. The gap of spending over anticipated revenues is being filled by using um, close to $2.6 million of the district's fund balance, which is an actual decrease from the 2019-20 school year by 27.53% or $985,000. Here we're showing the three-part summary. The district is required to break down our spending in three parts. Those three parts consist of administrative, program and capital components. This provides our taxpayers with a better understanding of where um, the district's taxpayer money is being spent and in what areas. As you can see, programming, which encompasses all of our instructional and support wages and benefits, student programming, textbooks, is our largest area of expense or cost. Our administrative portion continue, continues to be minimal and has actually seen a decrease of, of around 4%. This is a result of not filling some um, vacant positions at administrative positions, as well as some reductions in the upcoming school year. The administrative um, really, when you consider our administrative, that is really our certified administrators who spend 50% or more of their time performing our supervisory duties, data processing, supplies, and some of our legal fees amongst others. Lastly, you'll see the capital portion of our, our district expenditures, which covers um, purchase items such as purchases of our buses, um, salary and benefits for custodial and maintenance staff, all facility costs, service contracts, um, repairs, maintenance, and debt service. And overall, as you can see, the biggest increase that we've had in all the areas, administrative and program, you did see a reduction, but we did see a slight increase in our capital component, which is attributable to some debt service that um, the district is financing for our capital construction projects. Here you can see more of a visual um, version of our three-part breakdown. As you can see, the largest component is our programming, which is really all the, that's ne ne the necessary expenses to support our staff and our students. And that's roughly about 74, 75%. Administrative is a small piece of the pie and capital, again, for the upkeep and maintenance of our buildings is about 17.3%. As promised earlier, please, um, I'm going to show you, this is the website address for our complete budget packet. We'll navigate to the website so that we can show you the detailed appropriations by category, which is in general is our general support, instruction, um, pupil transportation, and some other items. So here is, as we're showing right here, is the district website address, should you wanna go on. And here you can see a live version of our district website and in, in this website area, um, part of our website, you can see the budget and the taxpayer information. All the budget documents that we are talking about tonight are listed in this section right here. And as we mentioned, there's a complete, complete section. Our budget newsletter is also in there. So when we look at our um, 2021 expenditure budget, I'm gonna click right here. You can see a summary of our appropriations by category. And those categories um, include our general support, instruction, as well as our pupil transportation and, and some other areas. And again, totaling up to the 75, 
8.9 in district spending. Here we, um, we have provided a glance at our expenditures by um, different areas, salaries and professional, as you can see, decreased about 2.4% in our support. And again, we, we did have to make some tough decisions this year in, in reducing some positions. But again, majority of those um, reductions were through attritions and retirements. Our benefits um, and, um, dropped slightly, equipment, what you're going to see is a big decrease in the equipment because last year's budget included the purchase of two buses within the general fund. This year, those buses will be purchased through um, our, de our um, district reserves, which will have no tax impact. The debt service increase, again, as I mentioned before, is attributed to new debt and conversion from what we call bond, anticip bond anticipation notes to permanent financing combined with a debt service that fell off in the prior year. This continues to be offset close to 90% of our building aid. Here we have a pie chart, which will, which will provide you a better picture of where our expenses lie. Salaries and benefits are the biggest piece of the pie, but overall have decreased, have decreased by close to 3%. Any increase in wages were partially offset with reductions, as well as a new negotiated health plan, which saved the district a substantial amount this year. VOCES is um, about 8% contract services, which include um, any outside vendors or even our private and public placements are included in those totals. Now we're gonna move on to our revenues. So some of the sources that we have for 2021 are our property tax levy. As many of you may or may not have seen our prior presentations that have um, been presented in the last couple of months, are we have proposed for this year a 3% tax levy increase, which is approximately $626,000. I know this is the first time in over four years, but at this time it is crucial that we do have um, some um, income from our property tax levy. Other items include um, deferred tax payments, for example, and some pilots, charges for services, use of money and property, which is really interest earnings, state aid, and then other miscellaneous items. Here we can see um, a breakdown of our revenue. And again, this is all presented on, on pulling this actually from the district website. If you can see our 2020, 2021 revenue by account code, you can see in detail where we are projecting um, revenue for to be received this year. As you can see down here, you can see a significant decrease in our state aid, which is about $1.5 million, a total loss of revenue of $1.8 million. Oh, it seems like we have a technical glitch on this slide. And let me see if I'll go back up. Okay, so in this slide was a representation of all of our revenues. Um, the biggest part I can tell you, the green part slice of this pie is our state aid revenue, which represents about 67% of all of our income. This purple slice right here is the tax levy or our tax revenue. The small slices are other um, in other um, tax items, and then another small part is the other items such as use of money, miscellaneous receipts, and whatnot. Unfortunately, I apologize for the error um, it was showing earlier. As, as I mentioned, state aid always continues to be our largest source of district's revenue. With its 3% um, tax levy increase, we're showing you um, what the impact will be on our taxpayers. For the first time in many years, seven out of the eight taxing jurisdictions will see a decrease, which is the opposite I know from um, prior years. For the city of Amsterdam, this means a modest increase of $107 for the year and a change or, or roughly about $26.93 per quarter or roughly 897 per month. 
this um, is based on the assessed valuation of a of a hundred thousand or assessed value of a hundred thousand dollars for a home. The total true tax value rate is down probably about dollar forty two from last year. So many questions arise: What is a contingency budget? A budget this year for the first time because of the COVID nineteen pandemic. Many years, as you know, um, in the past, each district, if the first vote goes out is and is defeated, the district has um, the option to go out for a revote or accepted uh, another budget. You get two times, but unfortunately this year, because of the COVID situation and the budget votes being delayed to June 9th, if the budget gets defeated, we would have to go to contingency. What does that mean? Um, if the district does not receive the simple majority vote, which is 50% plus one, we will have to adopt a contingent budget. And it, um, the, okay, we just, okay. in a contingent budget, this does not allow for any tax levy increase. Without a tax levy increase, that means that we would maintain the same tax levy, which was at the same level as the prior year, which as we all know was at 0%. This means that we would not have the $626,000 in income that we had planned to balance our budget. And that would also mean that straight to contingency, we would have the loss of all of our extracurricular items, including, and obviously, but not limited to sports, some of the extracurricular clubs, which we discussed um, at our prior board meeting, which would include masterminds or marching band amongst others. There would be no facility use um, by outside venues unless they were paid for by them. No bus purchases would be allowed, no equipment purchases, and then some other minor items um, would not be allowed to be included in the contingency budget. So you can see what that contingency budget value is. Again, it's on our school district budget notice. The school district, school district budget notice was presented in our newsletter that was, um, I believe it was mailed out, but I also know it is posted on our district website. This provides the contingent totals and the breakdown as well as the three part budget if we do go on contingency. So what are our next steps? Our next steps are the voting process. So a couple of key things to be aware of this year is as we know, COVID-19 brought many um, voting process changes. There is no in-person voting. So there are no ballot sites that will be open. None of the school districts will be open. The district has been tasked with um, mailing out absentee ballots to all of our qualified voters. So there is about 14,000 um, ballots that are being mailed to all those um, voters that are qualified to vote. They must be returned to the Amsterdam School District no later than 5 p.m. on June 9th. So one thing I do want to mention is the postmark has nothing to do with it. It's the date that the district has it in hand at the office, at the district office, and it has to be here no later than 5 p.m. If you have not received a ballot and wish to receive a ballot, please email our email um, our district clerk, which is at districtclerk at gasd.org and request it and we'll make sure we get one out to you. On the ballot, you will see on the ballot several propositions. Obviously our first proposition is the district budget authorizing the spending of $75.9 million in authorized appropriations. Prop number two would be the per authorizing the purchase of two buses for a total of $225,000. Proposition three is voter registration, which is enabling all of our personal registration of voters for school district elections. And lastly, proposition number four is the Amsterdam Free Library, which is authorizing um, the district to levy taxes in the amount of $240,000, which is basically the district collecting the taxes that is not included in our tax rate, that is separate. The district will also, if you're unsure of how to um, fill out your ballot, the district will also have an instructional video showing you the how-tos of, of completing a ballot on our district website. So with that, that ends our presentation. 
Um, if you have any questions, we please ask that you, um, Lori, um, our district clerk is monitoring any of those questions because I cannot see the YouTube, but I do know I did have a question from one of, um, that was sent in and they were asking what exactly was cut from last year to this year in the budget, um, so, uh, specifically positions that have been cut. We will get back to you with that. Um, we can't give names or, and at this point we are still, we do know, let me step back. There are 28.5 positions through retirements and whatnot that have been eliminated from this year's budget. We can get you the information in general on what those positions are as far as names. Um, some of those um, eight people already have been notified, but we can get you that information. And the extracurricular, extracurriculars, as if everybody was listening to last budget, um, extracurriculars were originally taken out of the budget, but they had been reinstated. And that is the approval that we received from the Board of Education and adopted at the last Board of Ed meeting. So that total in our budget is a set number. It cannot be changed because it was adopted by the Board of Ed. If there's any questions. Colleen, uh, yep. there, there is about a 30 second delay between YouTube and and the live feed, um, but so far we do not have any questions on YouTube. Okay. So with that, I'll wait another minute or so if the Board of Education would like that, and we'll wait another minute. And then with that, that'll end our presentation. Colleen, I do have a question. Okay. And it is, when will the ballots be mailed out? So we believe, Lori, um, our district clerk and I just discussed this today. We believe they will probably be um, start being mailed tomorrow. Am I correct, Lori? That's, that's the thought. While they have not given us an exact day that they're going to go out, I expect over the next two days they should be out. Great. So far, no more questions. Okay. Another minute and then... Your announcement of the delay just went over on live on the YouTube. So you know where we are. I'll wait another minute, Doctor uh, Mr. McCurd, and then we'll end the presentation. Sure, because right now uh, they're hearing there's a delay, and we're waiting for questions. Okay. Colleen? Yes. I just got another question. Okay. Okay. Um, so the next question is, we need 50% voters or contingency is automatic? Correct. This year, because of the governor's um, changes in the executive order and because the budget, it, it, the first budget vote is June 9th, there is no way that there could have been another revote or ballots mailed out to 14,000 14, people again. Um, so it would go straight to contingency. And unfortunately with contingency, you would see the loss of um, all of our sports and extracurricular amongst some other items. I'm sorry, that should be 50% plus one, simple majority. Plus one. Right.
I think with that, are we all good? Okay. Well, we thank everybody for being on tonight and we hope, uh, unfortunately with the restrictions that we are receiving from state aid, that you are in agreement that um, we've done the best. And okay. I believe what we could with our, with our students, obviously students and staff first and foremost on our minds. Colleen, and we thank you. I'm sorry. sorry. I, I have another question. Okay. Okay. So this question is, instead of cutting out the sports with a low number of participants, did the district discuss putting teams together into co-ed teams to save money without cutting certain sports? So right now the budget that has been adopted has that has certain sports excluded. Obviously, you know, um, they could be reinstated should other funding come in. Um, we do we cannot reinstate it at this point because of the budget has been adopted by the Board of Ed. Obviously other solutions could be um, achieved should um, district or taxpayers want to fundraise or we'll be more than happy um, to support any fundraising to reinstitute re those um, sports. Okay, and then I'm not sure if this is actually a question or if it just has to do with the delay, but she says, I'm sorry, I did not catch our extracurriculars in the budget or not. Yes, extracurriculars were approved by the board to be reinstated and it is included in the budget that was adopted on May 19th. Okay, okay. We, should, we should maybe just wait another minute just because it seems okay like the delay is definitely lagging here so again if anybody is listening if um if you have any questions after we're done with this budget presentation please feel free to email us and we'll get back to you as quickly as possible Okay, so far nothing more. Okay. Okay, again, thank you everybody. Um, we thank you for all your support for the district and we thank you for everything that you're doing for our students. Everybody have a good evening.